Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the start of my F1 Road to Glory series here for 2019. We're here with the F1 2019 mod in career mode, and we're going to be signing a brand new contract with the toothpaste on wheel team itself, the shopping trolley from Aldi and Lidl combined. Williams Racing and trying to see if we can take them to glory. It's going to be a long old road. I mean, a, a longer road than most motorways in the UK probably and we can't even see the end of the tunnel. Uh, the lights, that is the glory. But nonetheless, we are beginning this road and we will stick to it until we get said glory. Those of you that have been crazily somehow subscribed to me for a long, long while will remember back in the day, way back in the day in 2012, I did a series called the F1 Road to Glory with Marussia and it was, uh, it's still such a cherished series for me in my heart of the channel. At the time, it was my main, main series when I was just starting out on YouTube with F1 ready in its first year or so. And I thought, you know what now, 2019, this Williams team is so far off the pace. It is time to bring back a series like this, a light-hearted, kind of half comedic, half serious career mode series. We were trying to take an absolute donkey of a car to the top of the championship and we have to stay in this team, highs and lows, until we do that and if it never happens it never happens and Paddy Lowe I'll still be working with him in season 10 and it just will never pan out but it, whatever happens it, it will stay in this team till I die so strap yourselves in get some popcorn out and it's time to hit the play button on the F1 Road to Glory 2019 Hey up lad, welcome to Williams Racing, really nice to meet you today, I'm going to show you around the whole factory, the whole uh, kind of uh, process and the paddock and the, the mindset here at the teams and uh, try and show you the ropes before the Australian Grand Prix. So over there is where we keep our cakes and coffee, uh, you know, re refreshments and whatnot. Uh, I'll show you where we uh, don't design our, our front wings and uh, where we don't do any other kind of developments and, uh, and such and such. And uh, first and foremost though, here is a seat that you can take early once you retire from the Grand Prix, that will be very useful for you sir. So so, uh, yeah, I'll see you on track then, lads, and uh, make us proud out there, yeah? I guess this is it then. The very first run in my brand new Williams racing car in 2019. Here it comes. Here we go. Out onto track. The first time I've driven this car in any sort of anger on a proper racetrack. Just thinking about the many months I've done preparation in winter training all the races in F2 to get to this point to drive a Formula 1 car. The pinnacle of global motorsport, the essence of racing it up. Oh. What happened? Let me know you're okay. Um, well, what happened was I hit the brakes thinking a Formula 1 car would kind of stop for turn 1, and this car is so bad I went straight on. So, that's great. Um, surely qualifying can't go any worse tomorrow. Nice job. Nice job, he says. Not no, nice job. We're 19th place, man. How is that a good job in any sense of the way? We're 2.5 seconds off the... But my teammate's 3.2 off pole position. How is that in any form a good job? How could this weekend possibly get any work? Oh, for crying out loud. Yep, it's raining. It's raining for the first race here. Absolutely fantastic. We are donezo out here, lads. We are finished as a team. Our car is going to be horrendous. Our car already feels like a boat in the dry. Oh, wait, hang on. If our car feels like a boat in the dry, could that does that mean it should be better in the wet? Nope. I'm here to tell you that's not how it works in Formula 1. Sadly, sadly not. Right, so here we are then, boys and girls. 19th place. Our first race. I've got to, I can't lie, being serious here, the car feels absolutely horrendous. We are legit 2.5 off the pace. I was pushing like a stabbed rat in qualifying, and we were just that slow. We have a lot of work to do. The car has understeer, oversteer, no power. Uh, I mean, no downforce, no even feel of weight change. Like, the, the weight just wants to shift left to right willy-nilly through corners. We've got a lot of work to do, a lot of R&D to do. But we're here. It's the first race. We just have to suck it up and get get on with it. I don't know. Maybe the wet. Maybe some people can crash and that we can, you know, maybe survive that and gain a few positions that way. To be honest, if I just make it to the end of this Grand Prix, I think that'll be a wild success, to be honest. So let's just get into this then. The very first race on this road to glory. The, 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 we will remember this race. We will remember this is the starting point of where we began our road to glory. 
Let's do this thing. As we now go to five red lights to get us underway here at Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. The lights are out. We're underway very gingerly indeed in these intermediate conditions here. It's been an okay start though. We're still maintaining the lead ahead of Robert Kubica, our teammate. They enter turn one though. They're nice and easy. It's easy to make contact and it looks like there has been a bit of contact. And you know what? There's a huge car bar. Carlos Sainz has had an issue there in his McLaren and we're up into P14. We've gone around the outside of five cars there as they all got Domino affected and uh, uh, kind of uh, shoveled behind uh, signs there. A miracle has occurred straight away in episode one here. Up into 14th place. This is unbelievable. But now we've got the absolute task of trying to see if we can even keep this 14th place because straight away now, two laps later, lap number three of 15. Danica Fiat there in the Toro Rosso is right up our chuff there. You can see the tail wagging out because we just don't have much grip really. I mean, I hope you can even see the, the, the visual understeer because I could certainly feel the understeer and lack of grip. We do go quite harsh on Fiat to squeeze my on the right hander but we get a bit of karma ourselves because then the car just doesn't want to turn in it's got no front end there and just, I let off the throttle but the car just rolled through in fifth gear and went off circuit so Kvyat's got us we're down to 15th place this would still be probably our engineer if we base it off our engineer being absolutely static about us getting 19th place in qualifying our engineer is probably going to have to throw himself off a cliff if we get 15th place of joy uh, if, we, if we finish like this and our teammate commits us in P16 as well so you know if we finish 15 and 16 I think Claire Williams want to give the entire team a bonus I think at the rate the team's been going as of late but we've now moved on to lap 5 you can see in the bottom right there indicate to my engineer yes we are going to pick for dry tyres a lot of people are in it's time to switch over DRS enabled so that usually means it is time for the slick tyres so we're going to go on to a set of super soft tyres and you never know maybe in this pit, busy pit lane could we maybe jump one or two cars here if they get held up you see a Mercedes car has already been held up there because he's quite down the order I think I think that was Valtteri Bottas maybe we're in now for a set of super off tyres, strap those on, the pit crew have done actually a good job here, so that's good I wonder how long that will last in the season but we jump at Alfa Romeo car there and also a Haas I think that is of Roman Grosjean so we have jumped a fair few and so I think we might be even better than we were before um, the lap number one, I think this is going to turn into a mega mega first race as it is yes we're up into P11 now on lap number six, this is lofty heights, so I hope we don't get a nosebleed to be in this high because this is really punching above our weight and so we're moving through here some highlights whilst nothing happens for us on track Hamilton here trying to take the Toros oh it's a massive crash it's a horrendous crash for Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes guy he's teed up there on his lone wheel on the rear massive massive shunt for Hamilton he's he, I think the Toros he was trying to overtake was on Inters and so he tried to swerve around the outside of him into the wall and so look at that lads one more free position they just keep coming to us and they the entire grid this did this uh, this right we'll be up at the first place it's looking all rather glorious although I say glorious that is the worst commentator's curse because up in smokes goes our teammate there Robert he's gonna be out of the Grand Prix he's gonna have to park up there with uh, the engine smoke and I wouldn't be surprised if that was all just due to a simple error of plugging in the spark plugs the wrong way around or even putting the engine in the wrong way around to the engine bay to be honest but now here we are in points paying positions here with a virtual safety car but we got a lot of fast cars behind us here and so again it's gonna be a case of can we even survive this in the Grand Prix we've got five laps remaining not including the one we're on into turn one you can see though the car just isn't really gripping in it's obviously a little bit slippery it's not going to make my life any easier although saying that for now we are keeping Grosjean at bay but we go defensive to the inside he makes a big big dive we locked up on the right tire gone wide but actually helps us defend against Grosjean there for now so we're just going to have to park an absolute bus here every apex to try and keep that Haskar from getting past us there you can see ooh, a little bit snaky on the curbing though and we've not got too much fuel to play around with we go defensive to the inside for the next right hander before we enter sector 2 and so we do a job for now still in to sector 2 but uh, as I said we've not got a lot of fuel to play around with and also ERS halfway through there obviously the start of season 1 ERS is not our best friend the efficiency is going to be very very poor and you can see on the exit snaking around a little bit that Haas car has got a lot of pace in its Ferrari works engine he might even make a move to the inside here. if we're not careful he goes for it a big dive to the inside we go neck and neck though and keep our foot in but he's got the place around the outside but he's got quite a bad exit actually over the curbing so dare I say can we have any kind of look around the outside as uh, many people up ahead set fast up for the Grand Prix I'm sure about 10 seconds faster than what we're doing currently but Grosjean is struggling in the damn conditions this is equalizing the pace somehow and so this could be a mega one because we go past him we're back up into P9 we're actually fighting other cars this is 
unheard of, unprecedented stuff. So we move on now to a brand new lap. A little bit, ooh, a little bit worse, shaky for him, worse for wear on the exit once again. So we have to watch out. It's going to be literally like this the entire time. Look at the train. We're already forming a little bit. This is, uh, this is what we're going to have to do quite a lot this season, I think. is going to have to look at this Williams car and look behind us. And there might be a fair few cars right behind us trying to get past. But hopefully the dirty air will kick in nice and hold them up nicely for us. But it's uh, it's going to be a question of how, how much can we hold them up now because we've still got a long way to go. You can see the fuel is still very, very uh, critical there. And over the bump, the car gets unsettled a little bit. And look at the exit. The Haas has got Grosjean down the entire... Oh, he's crashed into us. He's spun us round. He's broken off his wheel. Grosjean spun us round. We're down three, four positions. It's all gone horribly wrong. It's all coming up. Williams, we're down to 13th place. We've been put back into our place, literally, by Grosjean. They're assassinating. I mean, look at that. He, he doesn't even try to turn into the corner. He just straight lines us into the, into the left wheel. Breaks his wheel off. And thankfully, I just came off with a little bit of a spin there. But absolute assassination attempt by Grosjean. And so now, as we go through this Grand Prix, watching the three cars that overtook me after that spin, it's Raikkonen with a big dive to the inside there. And there's all oh, the rear tyres off. It's a big shot for Raikkonen. What is going on? Chaos here at the Australian Grand Prix. Raikkonen's out. That's one more free position maybe for us. So we're 13th place now. It'll be P12. Ugh, a little bit iffy if the car was going to go there. So it's a lift off. And we're up into P12, though. So is there still maybe some light at the end of this very dark, gloomy tunnel on Australia here. We're P12 still though as we move on to lap 13. Three laps to go, or two and a half really, because we're on the on the, on the the 13th lap. And Albon now, Alexander Albon is coming at rapid time in the Toro Rosso. We saw Kafiat do that earlier. Will Albon be able to spook us off the track? Hopefully not this time. I've learnt my lesson at the right-hander later on on this lap. But Albon will have a go on the outside. Actually, look at the speed of the Toro Rosso Honda compared to us. We've just got nothing to fend for. We're going to have to try our best though to outbreak him. It's a bit twitchy out there. It's still a bit damp you can see and we're actually understeering into Albon there so that was a defensive that was a, actually you know what that was a on purpose defensive technique I'm going to use the understeer of our car to defend against others quite tactically yeah it's, it's just something you've got to do when you've got a boat of a car like ours but now here we're still scrapping away actually and Albon's not actually getting away in a hurry and so we're now neck and neck into turn one though he's going to have the superior downforce he's going to go waltzing around the outside but we do have a second bite of DRS because we were behind Albon at the next point so here we go now on the outside and we actually build the speed can we make this the long way around no oh, oh, oh he's locked up he's pushed us wide on purpose he's just spiteful the Williams car we're gonna overtake him now the Renault's got oh, what what a Renault just came out of nowhere and finished our race that's it our race is over! Are you actually kidding me? I was joking earlier about needing a chair when I retire early from the Grand Prix. Ricardo just comes through and assassinates us on the left front tyre there. I know he's down the order, but that's no that's no reason to take it to take the anger out on us, Ricardo. Okay, I know it wasn't going well for your home Grand Prix. No need to swipe across us and take us out. But there we have it. We're out. We're out of the Grand Prix. That is our first race of the Road to Glory done. And it ends with absolute misery. Absolute misery. Good day today. Tell us about it from your perspective. Good day today? What? You a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? Um, uh, 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 in what way was that a good day, Claire? In what way? No comment for that question. You're breaking all expectations. What's your secret? Um, you know what? We're so bad there is no secret. So I'm going to have to say that would be telling. And they won't know that's because I don't have any secrets, huh? How do you feel the weather affected the outcome today? Well, it made our car horrendous in every sense of form, but you know what, i got to say, it just changed strategies and you find out who the better drivers are really in these kind of situations. Um, yeah. It wasn't the cleanest race today, was it? Well, no, I got punted three times, uh, three attempts on my life out there, so that was good. Um, so, um, yeah, I've got to say I'm a bit of an idiot magnet, and uh, Toro Rosso, they can go do one. Appreciate your time. I don't appreciate yours, Claire's. I don't appreciate that sarcasm of it was a good day for me, because it wasn't. And so here we are then, sports fans. At the end of the episode, I would have liked to say we could have finished it in a, in a respectable position, but it's a double DNF. Oh my god, this is going to be a long series. Double DNF to kick off the road to glory for Williams. This is, uh, 
It is, is not good times. Right, so in terms of upgrades then, we're going to have to purchase one upgrade per department. Chassis, aero and engine. We're going to have to wait two races, so the Chinese Grand Prix, for that to come in. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but I mean, what can you do when the, the, the factory you've got back at base is being powered by uh, several hundred hamsters? Uh, running in a wheel. I mean, we just can't afford actual mains electricity. We have to go au naturel for that kind of power generation for the factory. But uh, there we have it then, guys. I don't know what quite to say, really. But if you did enjoy the episode, nonetheless, despite the double DNF, then be sure to smash that like button. And let me know if you're thrilled to have F1 Road to Glory back in your life. If you aren't around here, do get subscribed for weekly Fallen on content. I've been Arava. Hope you enjoyed today. And I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully with a bit of a better car.